Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to do an overview of the functions of natural killer cells, part of the innate immune system. So first of all, let's go over what NK or natural killer cells are. First of all, they are a type of lymphocyte. Now, normally when people hear the term lymphocyte, they think of helper T cells and cytotoxic T cells. Um, natural killer cells are very, very similar to cytotoxic T cells. Um, typically, the normal cytotoxic T cell that we're used to hearing about is part of the adaptive immune system, and those T cells specifically target only one antigen. Okay, um, That's why they're part of the adaptive or specific immune system. Natural killer cells do not specifically target one antigen. Um, for that reason, natural killer cells can target a, a wide variety of abnormal cell types, and they're part of the innate immune system. In fact, one thing you'll typically hear natural killer cells do is participate in something called immunological surveillance. So what is immunological surveillance? Well, basically, they roam your body, these natural killer cells, and they just look for things that are abnormal. So something that could be abnormal could be an invading pathogen, Something that's abnormal could be a virus-infected cell, okay? Typically, when a virus has infected a cell, that cell fails to express normal self-MHC. So let's talk about how a natural killer cell recognizes a normal, healthy self-cell from an abnormal cell of any kind. Okay. This right here, this is, we're supposed to believe right here in my mouse, is that is a normal self cell, okay? Now, in all reality, in a healthy individual, a natural killer cell should not kill a healthy self cell, okay? Let's just suppose this was, I don't know, a liver cell, I mean, whatever it is, I mean, just a normal healthy self cell. Well, that normal self cell displays its self antigen on its MHC1 proteins on its cell surface. Well, the natural killer cell looks for two things, okay? It looks for, first of all, um, proteins on the surface of that self cell, and those certain proteins are actually able to bind to an activation receptor on the natural killer cell. Okay, so natural killer cells possess both an activation receptor, and there's actually multiple kinds. We're not going to get that detailed. And the same thing goes for inhibitory receptors. They have both of those. Well, if these uh, surface molecules on the target self-cell, if the activation receptor was the only thing there, then the natural killer cell would activate and it would kill the target cell, which in this case is a self-cell, and you don't want that. So what natural killer cells have is they have inhibitory receptors that can recognize self-MHC1, so a normal antigen displayed on self-MHC1 proteins. And if this inhibitory receptor recognizes those self-MHC1 proteins, then the inhibitory receptor, you could think of the inhibition outweighs the activation, and the natural killer cell will just leave that cell alone. And that's why natural killer cells don't kill any of our own self cells is because all of our normal healthy self cells display normal antigen on MHC1. Okay? So what happens when a natural killer cell runs across an abnormal cell? Now, for example, if we're talking about a pathogen such as a bacterial cell, first of all, bacterial cells do not even have MHC proteins. MHC proteins are something that are um, at least from a human's perspective, they're unique to our eukaryotic cells. So bacteria do not have MHC proteins. So first of all, there wouldn't be any MHC protein here. Um, another option is this could be a virally infected cell. So this could be a self cell, but it's been infected by a virus that's now inside the cell. Now let me ask you a question. If the virus had successfully gotten inside one of our own cells and it started um, reproducing, it reproduces virions. Let me ask you a question. If a natural killer cell just, you know, basically did what complement proteins do, which is insert a membrane attack complex into the membrane and the cell bursts, um, what would happen? Well, the virions would all just leave. 
and they would then go and affect other cells. So natural killer cells are a little bit more organized than just simply poking a hole in the membrane and the cell blows up, basically. Natural killer cells, what they do is, when they either fail to recognize an MHC protein at all, or they detect abnormal antigen on an MHC1 protein, which is the case for usually a virus-infected cell, what the natural killer cell does is it says, well, there's nothing inhibiting me, but it's able to be activated. Okay, so overall, the activation now outweighs the inhibition, and the natural, cell will kill, natural killer cell will kill this abnormal cell. And the way it does it is natural killer cells contain granules that themselves contain a bunch of proteins and enzymes. And one of the types of proteins in natural killer cells are called perforins. So perforins get their name from the term perforating. So what is perforating? Well, if you perforate something, it means you do poke a hole. But the mechanism of this is a little bit different. So the perforin proteins, they assemble themselves in a pore very similar to the way that complement pro proteins in the membrane attack complex work. The difference is, though, rather than just simply allowing the cell to lyse, what the natural killer cell does is also within the granules, there are enzymes that are able to activate apoptotic enzymes within this cell. And apoptotic enzymes are called caspases. And there are enzymes in these granules called granzymes and granulysins. And these enzymes, the natural killer cell literally puts through the hole created by the perforins and they go inside the target cell. And those granzymes and granulysins are able to activate caspases inside this cell. Caspases are a normal part of eukaryotic cells. And caspases initiate apoptosis. So rather than the natural killer cell just poking a hole and the cell bursts, because that would release all the virions if it's a virally infected cell, the natural killer cell induces apoptosis in that cell. And when that happens, apoptosis is a much more controlled way of killing a cell. And so it, because the, the death is contained inside the cell, the virions will actually all be killed. So natural killer cells are very good at targeting and killing virally infected cells without letting the virions actually spread. And in fact, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that our natural killer cells are very similar to cytotoxic lymphocytes um, that are part of the adaptive system. And one of the other similarities that's really important is cytotoxic lymphocytes also use the perforin pathway. They are able to puncture a hole with perforin and insert granzymes, granulysins, and they can also induce apoptosis in a, a target cell. Okay, so hopefully this gives you a little bit of nice information on natural killer cells, how they work. Um, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.